What's up you guys, Jason here, Dan, Students of Life, where we break down life lessons and learning so that you can improve your life. Today we're doing a deep dive into James Suckling's masterclass and specifically on wines. Uh, but before we get into that, I wanted to talk a little bit about like some of our stories and like what made us interested in wines in the first place and share some of the things that we learned in the video as well. So start us off, Dan. Yeah, so uh, I'm in the finance industry, and I realized that I was going out to a lot of nice dinners with a lot of nice bottles of wine, yeah. and people were talking a lot about them, and I couldn't really participate in those conversations because I didn't know a whole lot about wine. feel a little dumb. Feel it's, not little a dumb. Great, it's not a great feeling. And so being a student of life, yeah. um, I decided to fix that and yeah. start to do a lot of research on wine and wines, wine tastings, yeah. certain characteristics, what made a wine expensive versus not expensive, which we'll get into. Um, but I took care of that area of my life that was an insecurity before, mm -hmm. and I found this James Suckling class. How about you? Yeah, I mean, I can relate. I've definitely been in a restaurant where, you know, you show up, you're passing around the, the wine menu, and you feel a little dumbfounded, like, I don't know where to start. I have no idea what any of these mean. I don't know the names. I don't know if the prices are good. Am I getting ripped off? Um, it's not a great feeling. For me, uh, my first experience with wine was when I was probably about 21 years old. Um, I got lucky enough to get invited to this uh, dinner hosted by a family friend of someone I was working with. And basically the guy put on a show for the entire night. He did this amazing eight course meal. And then every course he paired a wine. And not only did he pair wine, he paired uh, a quote unquote expensive wine as well as a quote unquote cheap wine, like a two buck chuck or something like that. And the fun of it was that he didn't tell anybody which was which. And he just invited us to try the food try the wines and talk about it. And being 21, the best wine I knew at the time was, uh, you know, Franzia and slap the bag or something. No, I didn't do that. I might've done that. Um, barefoot wine. Yeah, barefoot. <laughs> um, but uh, no, so that, that literally really had a, a impact on my life and changed the way I approached food and it changed the way I approached wines. And that's kind of led to my inspiration of wanting to learn more about this and also realizing like wine doesn't have to be this pretentious, highfalutin thing. And it, it's really just meant to be an experience um, and something to explore. And it's okay not to know much about it. It's really about learning as you go, trying new things out and figuring out what you like. It's, it's just really a matter of preference. And so uh, that's kind of what got us, uh, it, we, we started talking about this, the, the masterclass uh, course and uh, we had both taken a, a watch at it. So wanted to kind of quickly go down to, into some of the things that we learned and took away from the class um, and kind of what we've done since then. So yeah. tell us a little bit more about James Suckling and, and what he talks about in the course. Yeah, so James Suckling Masterclass, and you'll notice I have notes, forgive me, wine can be a complex thing and we're gonna make it as approachable and as non-pretentious as possible. So yeah. I just wanted to highlight a couple things um, that are staples of wine. Sure. So obviously the characteristics of wine are, are the color, uh, fruit, non-fruit, dry or sweet, does it leave your mouth feeling dry after you taste it, the body of it, and then how does it finish, right? Does it leave an aftertaste, is it lasting, is it, is it long or does it go away right away? Um, and so those are some of the basics of wine. Yeah, I think uh, what I would say is like there's a lot of different dimensions that like the pros talk about. Right. They, right. you know, they look at it, and it's, does, is it this, is it that, is it, I, you know, at the end of the day, it's, I think it's boiled down to, um, how does it, how do you, do you like it, right? Yeah. It, does it taste good or does it taste bad? That's like the number one indicator, right? And then if it does taste good, it's like, okay, what about it right. tastes good? Is it rich and velvety and smooth? Is it, you know, big and bold and maybe dry? You, it feels like the moisture's being sucked out of your mouth, but not too much to the point where it's uncomfortable. Um, is it hot? Like, do you feel the, do you taste the, the alcohol in it? Like that's the starting base of, of it. And then as you try more of these, it, it gets more refined and you start to evolve and you start to notice other things that, that kind of lend itself into what you're talking about. Yeah, and so part of noticing things is uh, there are regions in the world that are popular for wine, old world being France, Italy, yeah. uh, and then some of the newer places, uh, Argentina would probably be also considered old world sure. uh, with their Malbecs and such. Yeah. Um, but Napa Valley, obviously, the West Coast in the United States and Oregon and such are famous regions for wine. And there are certain things that make wines taste a certain way, uh, namely the soil and the weather patterns in those certain regions. So um, James Suckling gets uh, really far into that, being the yeah. sommelier, and uh, that's for another time. But you should know that there are basic regions of the world 
where wines are produced and good wines are produced. And that's one of the things I appreciated about um, what he does in the in the course is he he essentially it shows you all of it, right? He he goes to France and does some tastings of French Bordeaux, right. uh, which I had never had before and actually inspired us to, to do right. our own tasting, which we can get to in a moment. Um, he also tries some Italian wines. He does a vertical tasting, which I'd never even heard of, where you're basically just trying the same uh, bottle of wine, but from different, Year, different years. Different years, different vintages. Um, and then he obviously goes to Napa, Napa and really everything on the West Coast has some amazing wines. Um, I'm still partial to a Napa cab, I would, I would argue. Um, but yeah, he, he really approaches uh, each of the, the regions and kind of just like unveils them to you, which I thought was uh, super interesting. Yeah, and so the last thing I'll touch on about the masterclass is a $100 bottle of wine that much better than a twenty, thirty, forty dollar bottle. Yeah. How do you know you're not getting ripped off? How do you know you're not getting ripped off? Yeah. And so wine is 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 uh, measured on a hundred point system, and that's broken down into color, aroma, palate, and overall quality. Yep. So that's wine in a nutshell from uh, the James Suckling Masterclass. Now we're going to talk about the party that we threw. Yeah, before that, I think one of the things that was useful on their their like rating system. Uh, basically like, you know, let's face it, anything that's like, you know, in the 80s, probably decent wine. Um, once you start getting north of 90, that's when things start getting really good. Um, and then once you start getting north of like 95, like those are exceptional wines. And that's kind of how they break down their, uh, their point system. I, I will admit, I still to this day don't know how they, they split hairs between like, you know, 93 points, 94 points, you know, whatever. I, it's a little nuanced, even for me. But I think it's a personal I, I, preference. It is. Maybe a little more. And what's also <laughs> interesting is you'll find that, uh, you know, wine critics will will uh, disagree with each other. Right. Um, actually, I've been watching a lot of Gary Vaynerchuk uh, lately, and he's been he does well. He used to do his uh, wine TV library tasting videos, and uh, he would kind of like put in his own opinion versus all of these. Uh, other critics and it's the point being as we started with it's all about what you like does it taste good does it remind you of something pleasant or does it taste like sewer right like these are like the, the refinements that some of these guys will even talk about so um, that's kind of the in a nutshell the master class and some of the things we took away um, from that it inspired us to experiment on our own, right? So we ended up deciding to uh, throw together a wine list and uh, have some uh, some friends over here at my house, and uh, we hosted a night. So basically, what, what what the plan was? I mean, we had talked about it. You had thrown out some ideas. Um, the goal was okay. Let's put someone to the test. Let's invite you know ten of our closest friends and figure out you know a introduce this experience to other people that haven't maybe tried a bunch of wines. Um, the other idea was, all right, let's really put 95 rated plus wines to the test. Um, so wh I forget, remind me some of the, what are the things that you took away from the, the events and like, what did, what do you like most about like how it was structured and what we ended up doing? Yeah. So look, it's, it's all, life is all about making memories with the people that you care about the most in my yep. estimation. So yep. uh, throwing wine events and being the steward of such events is a good thing socially. Yeah. The social capital. Yeah. You're viewed as an expert in something that's sophisticated, which is also uh, gives you practice for work and life and different kinds of presentations. Yeah. Um, and, and it's fun, right? It, it clicked off a lot of our boxes of how to spend a Saturday night. I think especially during the times we're in with COVID and everything, um, it, you know, it got us back to like breaking bread with right. friends and family um, and, and having some good wine. So the way that I kind of approached it was we took 10 wines. I had, uh, 10, 10 people here and I, I wanted to kind of emulate what they did in the wine class. And so we did a variety of, uh, whites, primarily reds, cause I'm a big fan of reds. And then I was really unfamiliar with Bordeaux, which he talks about in the master class. Um, he talks about, uh, super Tuscans or like Italian mm. reds. I wanted to try some of those. Obviously had an, had to have an appearance by some, uh, some California Napa cabs, big fan of cabs. Uh, and then we threw in a couple other there uh, in there just for good measure. I think we had a, um, we had a Rioja, we had a uh, Pinot Noir, uh, highly rated and a couple other things to kind of round out the tasting. And uh, it really wasn't too difficult to do. 
I think one of the surprising things is you can actually find some really, really good wines for, you know, call it 20, 30, 40, maybe 50 bucks. Uh, to be fair, we did spend probably on average about 90 bucks, 100 bucks a bottle, uh, but we were kind of splurging. I don't think that's what you have to do every time. Um, and the next thing we did was we, you know, you can go online and find uh, wine pairings with cheeses, with foods, whatever. All I did is I, is I essentially took each of the, the, the types of grapes that um, we were looking to taste and then found a cheese that would pair well with that. And we just did, you know, maybe uh, one cheese for every two bottles. So it was pretty good. What did you, you think of it? Yes, uh, agree. Uh, the Manchego cheese was my favorite. <laughs> yeah. um, also make it nice. I thought the nice touch um, was the flowers on the plates that was, of our dates. That was the girlfriend's uh, touch, yeah. Just little ways to enhance the experience, which you did a great job of. Yeah, and, and let's be clear, uh, we're, we're no experts, not yet. I uh, right. like to think we know a little bit um, uh, something about wines, but I think when you do an event like this, it's like an opportunity for yourself to learn as well as everybody else. I had a lot of fun just kind of going through each of the wines, picking them out. Um, I'll share a couple of links of some of the, the websites I use that give a ton of like details about the grape, the region. And as you go through that process, you start to kind of accumulate the knowledge and the understanding of, you know, where wine comes from, why it's known to be good, or at least like what other people talk about. Uh, you might completely disagree. And I think one of the interesting things that we did in the tasting was that, uh, you know, I, I kind of uh, emceed let everybody taste it. I talked about you know what the actual rating was, 95, 96. We had 100 point uh, wine on there that was pretty good. And then I, I talked through kind of what the the uh, critics would say about it. And I think for the most part, people found their review comical because they throw in some things of like pencil lead shavings and graphite and you know granite stone and we're all like what um, but i think the, the the best part was you know unveiling kind of the the prices at the end and i think it's uh goes without saying is price is not reflective of the quality and a lot of times people are enjoying the the cheaper bottle for you know 25 bucks as opposed yeah. to the 150 dollar bottle that we tried so look the feedback we got from the event was all positive and i would do it again in a heartbeat you can also do it with you know whiskeys or beers or uh, different things. Yeah. Um, so I definitely do it again. Thanks again for hosting that. Sure. Now on to some pro tips. Restaurant wine lists can be overwhelming. I would recommend that if you can, most restaurants have their menus online now. Research it before you go and kind of have a library of things that you like in a wine so that when you're talking to the waiter or uh, waitress uh, or the sommelier, they can direct you towards something that you're going to enjoy to enhance your meal. Yeah, I think I think that's right. Right at a minimum, know like what grape you like. Is it a cab? Is it a you know cab franc? Is it pinot noir? Is it syrah? Whatever. Yeah, learn uh, your or sorry, I'm all reds here. Uh, or is it chardonnay, pinot gris, whatever. Um, know the grape and then know the quality of it that you like. For me, I like big, bold, rich, velvety. Um, don't like dry. You know suck all the water out of your mouth, uh, Merlots or something like that, right? So just try those out and know that and you can have an intelligent conversation with you know, your server or uh, sommelier. Yeah, so uh, lastly, we just wanted to give you some of our favorites that are reasonably priced. Yeah. Uh, Bonanza is one that's made by the Camus Vineyards. Just steal in mind, man. That's my, my go-to favorite. Apologies. Red now, Bonanza. It's like 20 bucks, 22 bucks, and it's a phenomenal wine. Uh, I don't even know if it's actually properly rated, but it's, you know, it's 95 in my book for sure. Yeah. Another good red is Maomi. Yeah. Um, that's a good table wine. Most people always have that's a that. Pinot, Pinot Noir. Yes. Uh, also like 22, 24 bucks right. maybe. Correct. Yeah. And then La Crema. There, La Crema is uh, a red wine as well, Pinot Noir, yep. that you can get from the Sonoma Coast. There's also different regions that La Crema makes their wine from. Yeah. Uh, and those are all reasonably priced if, you, if you're looking to start your... Uh, your, your wine cellar, those are some, some good wines to start off with at a reasonable price. That's right. So, I mean, that's just it. Wine doesn't have to be this pretentious, uh, expensive, crazy world that you can't participate in. Uh, it's really can be approachable. It should be enjoyable. It should be fun. It should be about the exploration. So we hope that you learned something from this today. Uh, definitely check out James Suckling's masterclass. They really go into the weeds there and go a layer deeper. If uh, you care to learn some more, we'll uh, share some of the links to some of the things we talked about in the description below. 
If you got anything out of this video today, uh, please smash the like button, we'd really appreciate it. And if you'd like to get notified of videos like this in the future, please subscribe to the channel and you'll get notified as we release new vids. Otherwise, till next time.